This bridge isn't just a road between countries. It's a $4.7 billion solution to a decades-old problem. For years, trucks moving between Detroit and Windsor were funneled through an aging, privately owned bridge with no highway connection, causing delays at the busiest commercial border in North America. But now, something bigger is happening. Built with millimeter-level precision, the Gordie Howe International Bridge will connect Ontario's Highway 401 directly to Michigan's I-75. It's taken years of planning, engineering, and coordination across two nations. And while most people stopped paying attention after the towers went up, that's when some of the most complex work actually began. So today, we're catching you up and showing you what's happened since last spring as the bridge nears its biggest milestone yet, opening day. The Gordie Howe International Bridge didn't come out of nowhere. For decades, the US and Canada relied on just two major crossings in Detroit, the Ambassador Bridge, built in 1929, and the Detroit-Windsor Tunnel, opened in 1930. Neither was designed for modern trade volumes. The Ambassador Bridge, in particular, became a bottleneck, privately owned, aging, and with no direct highway link on the Canadian side. Trucks had to weave through local streets to reach the border, creating delays in what had become North America's busiest commercial crossing. By the early 2000s, it was clear something had to change. A joint effort between Canadian and US transportation agencies proposed a new span that could handle growing trade demands and provide a direct highway-to-highway -highway connection between the two countries. The idea became formalized in 2004, and after years of planning and environmental review, Canada created the Windsor-Detroit Bridge Authority in 2012 to lead the project. Project. It was initially expected to open in 2024 and cost a total of 3.8 billion Canadian or 2.8 billion US dollars. However, due to COVID related supply chain issues, the projected open date was moved to fall 2025 at a cost of 6.4 billion Canadian or 4.7 billion US dollars. Construction officially began in late 2018. Canada fully funded the project through a public private partnership contracting a group called Bridging North America to design, build, operate, and maintain the bridge in related infrastructure. Early work in 2020 focused on deep foundation caisson drillings and the construction of the large anchor blocks for the Stay Cable System foundations. The support towers, which began vertical construction in early 2021, now stand around 720 feet or 220 meters tall, roughly the height of a 70-story building, and were constructed using self-climbing cranes painted red on the Canadian side and blue on the US side. By 2023, crews began installing the cables, 216 in total, each supporting part of the 2,800-foot or 853-meter main span over the Detroit River. And this is exactly where we left off last May, so now let's talk about everything that's happened since. The most symbolic and technically demanding milestone came in June 2024, the mid-span closure. Crews placed the final pair of structural steel edge girders on the bridge, physically connecting Canada and the US for the first time. This wasn't just symbolic, it was a critical alignment operation, requiring the two halves to meet with millimeter level precision despite years of separate construction, different surveying systems, and exposure to wind, thermal expansion, and tower deflection. According to the project team, the final closure aligned within 10 millimeters of design, an astonishing level of precision considering each side had been built independently in separate jurisdictions. That level of accuracy was achieved through continuous monitoring using robotic total stations, receivers, and high precision digital levels. Survey teams maintained over 150 control points and regularly adjusted them. Cable stay tensioning was carefully calibrated in the days leading up to closure to ensure the segments would match an elevation and horizontal alignment. Once joined, the bridge transitioned from temporary supports to full cable stay load bearing, with 216 tensioned cables taking on the dead load of the now continuous deck. Shortly after mid-span closure, another big milestone came, the final tensioning of all 216 stay cables. These cables, made up of high-strength steel strands housed in weather-resistant HDP pipes, do the heavy lifting on this cable stayed bridge. Each cable contains between 38 and 122 individual strands, and together they support roughly 34 million pounds of structural load. By late summer 2024, final stressing and fine-tuning of cable forces was underway, ensuring the bridge remained balanced and within designed deflection tolerances. Meanwhile, the bridge towers were declared structurally complete earlier in 2024. These are now the tallest bridge structures in Canada and among the tallest in all of North America. 
And with the towers completed, the massive tower cranes, visual landmarks of the project since 2020, were ready to come down. The red Canadian crane was dismantled in June 2025, and the blue US crane should be fully dismantled by the time this video releases. These weren't ordinary cranes, these were self-climbing units that had grown vertically with the towers and the removal involved a multi-phase operation using a 600-ton crawler crane stationed at grade. It's a signal that vertical construction is done and that the project is moving into finishing phases. And in another major area of the construction, the work happening at the ports of entry has been just as critical and just as complex. As of June 2025, both the Canadian and US port of entries are in final fit-out stages. The major buildings have been framed and enclosed. Tool booths are in place. Now, crews are focused on interior finishing, electrical systems, lighting, data networks, furniture installation, and final landscaping. Each port of entry is designed with significant throughput capacity. Canada's side includes 24 inspection lanes and 16 toll booths. The US side will have 36 lanes, along with enhanced security features, including the Jefferson Avenue barrier wall, which is also nearing completion. Perhaps most notable is the implementation of a new digital tolling system. Designed to accommodate both US and Canadian currencies, this system will accept debit and credit cards, transponders, mobile devices, and even Nexus-linked payments. All of this requires heavy back-end integration, much of which is being tested right now in preparation for handover to border agencies. One of the most active construction zones through 2024 and into 25 has been the Michigan Interchange, a 1.8 mile stretch of upgraded highway infrastructure linking I-75 to the US port of entry. Crews have been installing final bridge girders on access ramp and completing structural work on five new pedestrian bridges. These connect Solvay, Beard, Waterman, Junction, and Lansing streets, and are designed to improve neighborhood connectivity after years of disruption. The interchange project also includes a long list of local road upgrades, new asphalt, curbs, sidewalks, stormwater infrastructure, and cycling facilities. Work on siphons and noise walls has continued, specifically in the southbound side of I-75. While the structural elements are in place, What's happening now is systems integration, the layer that makes this more than just a bridge. Throughout 2025, crews are installing fire suppression systems, lighting, signage, CCTV cameras, communication systems, and border control infrastructure. This work must be done in close coordination with government partners in both countries. Testing and validation are expected to continue right up to the substantial completion milestone in September of 2025. And because I really haven't mentioned too much about it, the bridge will also include a dedicated multi-use path for pedestrians and cyclists. It will be separated from vehicle traffic by concrete barriers and will be toll-free. This path links Windsor's Great Lakes Waterfront Trail with Michigan's Iron Bell Trail and the Great Lakes Way. That connection makes the Gordie Howe the first international crossing integrated into the Trans-Canada Trail. An over 17,000 mile or 2,800 kilometer recreation trail network spanning the entire country. As of mid-2025, the bridge is 95% complete. As I mentioned, substantial completion is expected in September, and the first traffic is forecasted for the fall. Over 13 million labor hours have been logged, with roughly 2,500 workers involved in construction and engineering roles. What's remarkable about this bridge isn't just the scale or the price tag. It's how quietly complex this final year of work has been. After the towers went up and the deck was closed, construction didn't wrap up. It shifted focus to systems, integration, and coordination. This is, without a doubt, one of the most impressive and inspiring projects happening on the continent today. And it's very exciting seeing it finally get ready for use. At Billcor, we're building America, one story at a time. We cover some of the most impressive and headline-grabbing projects and topics across this great country, and with your help, the channel has grown to over 45,000 subscribers and reached over 10 million people. With that being said, thank you, and I'll see you next time.